According to a recent poll by CIBC, 24% of Canadian snowbirds are off to Mexico, Central America or South America to flee the harsh winter months that we experience here in the Great White North. So, what makes Mexico such an enticing location for winter travel, especially when compared to the U.S., namely Florida, which is home to many Canadian snowbirds and expats? Joining me to discuss this is a Canadian-born entrepreneur who moved to Mexico, Steph Farr. She is the founder and CEO of Maya Lux, a villa rental company located in Mexico's Mayan Riviera. Steph, welcome to Bridge City News. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So first off, Steph, tell us what made you fall in love with Mexico and the Mayan Riviera? Oof. Um, so I originally moved to Mexico 15 years ago. I stepped foot um, in Cancun with the intention to just travel and explore the destination. Uh, my work as well overlapped with uh, what we do, which is luxury villa rentals. And I fell in love with the destination specifically for the weather, uh, being Canadian, born and raised in Montreal, escaping the cold winters. It was a luxury to be able to have these tropical, uh, this tropical destination. The water, we're considered to be on the Caribbean side. So we have turquoise, incredible, incredible beaches, uh, white sandy beaches. So, and not to mention the vast jungle as well. So it's really an incredible array of just from the incredible weather, the beaches, the jungle and the culture, which is the most important thing as well. It's just been really a unique experience. Now in my, under, in my younger years, it seemed like many of the retirees that went away for the winter would head down to Florida or Arizona. Nowadays, I'm hearing more and more people are choosing Mexico. Why the recent boost in popularity? I think it's uh, multifaceted in the sense of number one, since the pandemic, uh, it's just really easy for everyone to come here and escape to Mexico. Uh, we didn't have any restrictions. So you didn't have to get tested for COVID. Uh, you didn't have to have any, you didn't have to be vaccinated. It was just really, we'll take everyone and anyone can come and, and enter into this destination. So it's just the ease of traveling here. As well as if you compare the peso to the dollar, the cost of living is much cheaper here. And so just in general, the quality of life, and then of course add on the weather, but um, the quality of life, everything's at your disposal here. And uh, whether you're looking to hire a full-time chef for yourself, something that we're not used to, or I would never, you know, growing up had a, a chef at my disposal, but that's something that is really affordable for most Canadians coming in. And I think it's just that, knowing that you have the incredible weather, you're on some of the most incredible beaches. And of course, your Canadian dollar just takes you so much further than what would in, in Canada. So it's, it's a win-win. Now, you mentioned the pandemic. Uh, for a country that relies so heavily on tourism, uh, why wasn't the pandemic such a concern? We were open the entire time. Um, you know, it, the cases varied based on different destinations within Mexico. I believe because we're an open air, you know, any tourist destinations an open air, we didn't we didn't suffer from as many cases. Um, and and to be honest, it it really was Mexico knew we knew that we just had to continue and move on. Nothing's you know we're not going to stop. Uh, business continues as usual. And so for us, even as a company. Our company thrived. We had more visitors than we did in 2019. Wow. Um, the pandemic was actually our, the year of the pandemic was actually our best performing year in terms of rentals and occupancy rates for our homeowners. Wow. Um, so many new businesses had opened. And again, because we were one of the only destinations in the world that stayed open. And not to mention, did not require any type of testing on arrival. Um, and so there just weren't any restrictions. We were just like welcoming everybody. Um, and so that just became the ease of use of travel. So if, you know, those that were looking to travel to the Caribbean destinations, they were either closed or it became an insanely difficult application process just to be able to get in. And so we know it's going on vacation. Uh, you know, we want something that's easy and, and uh, convenient. So, yeah, it was actually a great year for us. 
that, that's just amazing to hear how how your business thrived in in the middle of a pandemic when other businesses were like uh, were either being restricted or and eventually had to shut their doors. Now, a follow up question to Mexico's boost in popularity: the subject of politics has been a very divisive one in Canada and the U.S. in recent years. So, do you think Mexico gives Canadians and Americans a break from all that political drama? Uh Absolutely. And that's that's probably a major feedback that we get when uh, we meet with uh, foreigners that are joining or moving. It's just that it's it's just simple. It's back to the basics. When you come to Mexico, it's really I like to say, you know, disconnecting, disconnecting from what's going on and able to connect and come back to what's important and being able to shut out and, you know, really just focus on what's important for us and not really just constantly having, you know, our ears filled with and, you know, with some noise and political noise. And it's, yeah, it's just basic and we're able to escape from, from all of that. Now, one thing Canadians love to boast about when we are out of the country is our public health care system. What options do Canadians have while in Mexico if they need medical attention? Yes. So essentially, depending if they're traveling as tourists, but also if they're if they're looking to move and uh, plant their roots in Mexico, of course, there's options of private insurance um, that's very affordable. And then, of course, many Canadians opt to not even have the insurance because it's just cheaper. The medical system is just cheaper in order if you just pay for case by case case. If you want to visit with a GP or you have you need a specialist. Um, let's say an emergency at the hospital with x-rays can come out to be about $200. Um, you know, that's just kind of an average, but it, it's also, it's the accessibility. Again, uh, doctors are, will come to your house if need be, uh, even just, you know, for example, traveling to different destinations where we had to get our negative COVID test, they'll come to your house, take the test, send you your results. Um, it's just a matter of having your doctor or phone number away, you can call, make an appointment, and you don't have to wait months for, you know, it's just literally make an appointment, you could have that x-ray the next day or the MRI the same day. Um, so it's much cheaper, if, even if you are going the private route and you don't have your, if you're not paying for an insurance either, uh, just appointment by appointment can be relatively or exponentially cheaper than private in Canada, and it's also the accessibility and the timeliness where it's it's just everything's much faster and convenient. So for snowbirds who uh, want to spend, say, six months down in Mexico and they want to forego the travel insurance, uh, how much money should they set aside uh, for their health care then? Do you have a recommendation? Oof, um, I would say, I mean, I, I, I would say max, or I don't want to say max, but I would say around $500 a year. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's not considering any type of emergency or whatnot, but 500 is extremely is extremely generous. That's amazing. Now, Mexico has been in the news quite a bit lately. Drug cartels have can be a concern for visitors who don't know the area or have never visited the country before. Now, we are hearing news that violence is ensuing following the capture of one of the sons of El Chapo. How concerned should we be if we're considering visiting Mexico? That's a great question. We get asked that very frequently by from potential guests or um, or even travelers that are looking to move. We say, you know, to be honest, it's really about what you're coming to do when you come to our when you come to Mexico. Uh, if you're coming to just enjoy a family vacation and just do your own thing, you're at absolutely no risk. It's really uh, any potential visitor that actually crosses the line or oversteps their boundaries in terms of being involved with the cartel, competing with the cartel, as, as silly as it may sound. Um, you hear cases of deaths or Canadians that got shot and uh, by, you know, by the cartel, but they don't, you don't hear the full story behind it, which is that they were actually involved with the cartel, competing in their territory. So... To be honest, it's really, it's, I consider extremely safe. My brother moved here 10 years ago, raised his young kids here, um, gated communities. They're riding their bike, doing their own thing, going to visit their neighbors, you know, just walking over. There's, it's really a very tight community based on the different pockets of where you're living. Um, and I would say it's not something that anyone really needs to be concerned about unless 
they're going into the party scene or the drug scene, then I would say, you know, just proceed with caution. Okay. I remember uh, walking around uh, the streets of Playa de Carmen on my first trip to Mexico, and I went solo, and I felt completely safe doing that. Now, there are many different places in Mexico to visit, Cozumel, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo, and I know I'm just scratching the surface of where all you can visit there. What destination would you recommend for first-timers? Well, I may sound very biased because this is where I am, which is Riviera Maya. Um, Riviera Maya, of course, is the stretch between Cancun all the way down to Tulum. And it's basically about seven destinations in one destination. So I consider this to be one of the top destinations to come visit for a first timer. Why? Because it's also super accessible, major direct flights, uh, direct flights to any major city in the U.S., Canada, even Europe, South America, Central America, Istanbul even. So it's really a hub um, that is accessible to any, pretty much any city in the world. Um, and so, and there's just an array of things that you could do here. Whenever I have someone coming to visit, I'll always say, you know, like at least block off 10 days because we're talking from visiting the ancient Mayan ruins to all the different types of beaches to going into the jungle and swimming in the cenotes, which are these natural uh, sinkholes. Um, there's just so much to do and just to be able to get in the car and pretty much drive and, and do everything. It, it really caters to almost every single demographic, families, friends, couples, um, you know, bachelor parties, bachelorettes, everything. So I'm a huge advocate on coming to visit this area. And especially again, I can't mention enough, the beaches are incredible and the waters, yeah, never gets old. The first time I went, I did a lot of tours, but the second time I went, I tried to save some money and I just rented a car and I drove to all these attractions. So what cost saving tips can you give to future travelers to protect them from getting nickel and dimed upon arrival? Anything from car rentals to tours to transportation? That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I always, I always say, do your research prior to arrival, um, where most travelers can be taken advantage of is at the airport when they look like they don't really know what they're doing or where they're going. So they're great yeah. targets. Oh yeah. I've seen so, that. Yeah. So I always suggest do the research before look at the different transportation companies, for example. Um, you know, don't just wait to get one there at the airport. Um, the same goes for the tours. Do that research in advance because you'll find some that are, you know, better than others or not as commercial as others that will take you a little bit more off the beaten path. Um, and then little things like ATMs, do not take your money out at just a regular ATM sitting on the main streets. Make sure you go to a bank, uh, like a bank ATM. Um, because there they'll charge insane fees, and also there's a possibility of cloning credit cards. So that's number one. Another trick that I always tell our guests are do not take a taxi at a taxi stand, which is what most people will do. Hail down a taxi from the streets. You will be able to get a rate that's about half, uh, at least half or a third of the price of what you would get at a taxi stand. So those are little, little tips. Um, definitely when you're renting a car, Always check with your credit card company first that, um, that you're renting the car with because most of them already come with insurance. They'll protect you against any type of collision or damages. Whereas these rental car companies will pretty much charge almost double the cost of even the car itself and the insurance. I think that's pretty much you know anywhere we travel, but that's something to really pay attention to. And, and again, I suggest calling your credit card company first to see what type of insurance they offer. Those are just little tips that we'll always give to our, our guests before they travel with us. Now, we're just about out of time, but I wanted to uh, squeeze in one more question here because I hear your business also takes an interest in supporting vulnerable communities in the Mine Riviera through its Rise Relief Fund. Can you just tell us uh, quickly about, about that? Yes, thank you so much for asking about that. It's something that I'm super passionate about. Um, you know, with the development of the region, it's, it's growing really, really fast in terms of development of you know, new condos going up, um, a lot of uh, private home developments. And so with the business that we do, which is private villa rentals, we also feel like we may be contributing to the problem of, you know, just from a sustainable aspect of contamination to the water, uh, jungle that we're tearing down. So we have implemented RISE, which is based on three pillars, sustainability, community, and education. Um, we donate 1% of our sales. 
So any booking, anytime a guest books with us, we take 1% of that and we give it back to either one of the three pillars, which is our projects through sustainability, helping restore the coral reef, education, working with schools, and then of course community of helping build and maintain our mine communities in the area. So that's a super passion of mine, but also it's really uh, the forefront of my lux of what we do, which is giving back. That's amazing. Great to hear. And I'm glad you're, you're, you're doing something that you're really passionate about and enjoying, enjoying a lot of vitamin D. But that's all the time we have for today, Steph. We really appreciate having you on the show today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Steph Farr is the owner and founder of Mexico-based Maya Lux. I'm Naveen Day. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, thanks for watching.